and hello hi welcome everybody have you ever wanted to make your own minecraft mod but i have no idea how to code you know the same as me so let's show you how super simple all it takes is one singular program and a little bit of knowledge of i guess uh code practices in this series of videos i will show you how to set up use and make some mods on m creator so welcome everybody first things first you're gonna need the program so choose your browser of preference or any other browser and bring yourself over to mcreator.net and from here you can download m creator for windows mac and linux choose the main download choose the exe installer it'll make your life so much simpler and then install the program like you would any other program and then once you have the program installed just open it up if it opened after you finished installing it while you're watching this tutorial it saves you some time so what you're going to want to do you're going to want to click new workspace from there you have a few choices you could either make a neoforge mod or forge i prefer neoforge it's also on a newer version of minecraft you can also do data packs resource pack editing or making minecraft add-ons mostly experimental as you get by these warnings down at the bottom but let's go with a neoforge let's go with the mod display name of tutorials the mod id namespace that is gonna be used quite frequently it's also something you're gonna want to make fairly simple but descriptive of what your mod is the display name is what people will see the mod id in slash namespace is what minecraft will see when trying to identify a specific item it'll know it is from the tutorials mod and then it'll look up any respective ids from there you're gonna want to choose your version which there's only the one version and then the mod java package name you don't really need to change any of that and then your workspace Older. this is where you're going to want to save your entire project so you're going to want to choose wherever you prefer so it could be an external hard drive it could be a flash drive it could just be a whole second hard drive that you have it could be in your documents folder but for me it's going to be on my desktop documents m creator new folder tutorials and select folder there is some rules on doing your workspace folder name i believe you can't have any spaces or anything of the sorts in there when you go to create the folder and try to save it it will tell you if you have violated one of the naming rules that it had once you have set up your workspace folder your mod name the display name your namespace selected your version what kind of uh, mod you want to load or make click create new workspace from here it will open up the what's next pad thing where you can uh, interact with the community can look for more plugins view change logs go to the wiki for any questions that you might have or view other mods that the community has made and from here m creator will do everything that it needs to to set up a fully functioning development suite it'll have everything that you need it will even allow you to do any custom coding if you so please this is more or less a minecraft exclusively developed uh ide which is kind of nice okay and this here is the screen that you will be greeted with once gradle is done setting up everything it needs to for m creator here i will go over a few of the more basic tools that you should definitely know of before we get started so up here you have your workspace tab as you open more and more mod elements more and more tabs will show up along the top so that way there you can work on multiple things without needing to close some things even though it would be good practice to keep yourself from getting too confused to close any unnecessary mod element tab right here you have your mod elements which is where all of your tools procedures enchantments advancements mobs structures everything that your mod contains will be displayed right here on this screen then down here in resources this is where all of your textures your sound files structures 
everything will be available down here as you import them they will automatically get added to here or you can import a bunch of textures beforehand if you already have a bunch of textures created element tags is just adding minecraft or forge or neoforge tags to your workspace so you can use tags to make things cross compatible or to be able to add things to certain tag groups from other mods these will be covered in more detail when we get to a point where we will actively be using some tags next we have your variables which are things that can change over time so it could store a number on a character for say you want to keep track of a mana counter for a character even though there is better ways to do it now but it'll allow you to store things like that store a true or false on a character to whether or not they have joined the world before or even a true or false for if the world that you are currently a part of has killed the ender dragon then you can use that to trigger any further events for seeking if that statement is true or false and then localization this here is where you would go if you want to be able to add other languages and translations for your mod i personally have never really spent much time using this menu because i only speak one language because i'm a doorknob okay and a few other important things that you should know of is the workspace where you can edit your element order in the creative tab something that we will be covering as we add more and more stuff to the tutorial mod then there's the open workspace folder which will open the file explorer to the root location of your project workspace settings these are where you can change more stuff about the overall general settings of your mod and as well as adding any extra external apis like jei and the such to help with mod development so under basic settings we still have our display name our mod id slash namespace this can be changed once you have started your project i do not recommend changing your namespace so try to have your namespace set up before or you add anything so that way there you don't have to do any fiddling around with trying to change your namespace it'll allow you to change your package name which again i do not recommend and do you don't really need to the minecraft version this here will be useful for when there is a new version of neoforge so like if you load the snapshot version of mcreator which would give you for uh, minecraft version 1.21.4 Four, as a minecraft version generator so this will make updating your mod a lot easier you could just click this drop down and choose a different loader mind you some mod elements might break because as you can see forge has a lot less support overall for certain features than neoforge does so if you choose to port your mod over to forge you will be losing some advancement features configured features game rules certain features will be less whole and will probably require you to do some tinkering around to get them working but in a different manner and then down below we have mod details you have your mod version for this one we are going to be doing version 0.0.1 .0 the mod description we will do slime lord rules tutorial mod the author name you could do your name so on so forth so we will just do rule website url would be for your website if you have one or m creators the credits you can add more stuff to it if you need so like texture artists sound artists or sound designers mod element programmers so on so forth the mod logo picture this will be once you have imported the picture into the workspace and the resources you can select it here and then there's the mod license which gives you all kinds of different types of licenses that you can use before you choose a license may uh, read up on the ones that you might want to use i tend to always stick with an mit external apis this here is where if you have any java mods or plugins installed you can enable them here or disable them for like jei which will be covered in a future video you can also have extra mods so if you're making an add-on for another mod that's required as the base 
you can input this so it was required to be installed as well other dependencies or dependents if you want to have mods that require this in order to function and then advanced settings allows you to enable it if it is a server side exclusive mod so it changes nothing on the client side and also just an update json url so if you wanted to ping a file to check if there is a newer version of your mod available mind you I don't actually know how mod update JSON URL, how to make it work because I have never used it. But once you have changed all your settings that you have deemed needed to be changed at this time, you can click save changes. And sometimes depending on what you've changed, it'll ask you if you want to refactor your workspace, especially if you have enabled some plugins. There you would click yes, refactor, it'll do its job, and then you'll be back to this page. So the last round of important buttons that you should know of before we continue on with any actual modding is up here in the corner by your minimize buttons. You have your first button, which is just a quick launch button to the workplace setting. You have regenerate code and build. This will completely regen and repair anything that might might have gone wrong sometimes this will help fix any problems if your game won't launch or it's telling you there is a problem here so on so forth i have found myself needing to click this once in a while not super often this button here will completely rebuild everything including your mod source files and gradle which is the overall architecture and structure that you are building your mod on top of and using to be able to load minecraft and view your mod without having to fully export it this little play button runs the client so it will launch minecraft it'll compile everything it needs to and then then voila just like that minecraft's open get your console so you can view anything that's needed gives you cpu usage memory usage and it allows you to view and as you can see we have base minecraft neoforge and the tutorials mod next is debug client which i am assuming is pretty much the exact same thing but it gives you much more control over debugging mind you not a feature i have used so this is something that i might have to figure out at some point and is probably for a bit more of an advanced user next we have run server and client this would be useful if you were trying to test a server side mod something that needs to run on a server but not necessarily the client beside it once you have launched minecraft itself through the run client a little red square will show up here that allows you to close minecraft and close the gradle process so that way there you can go back to working on your mod because you can't actually make any changes to your overall mod elements with the game open and then the last button is export the mod for distribution this is what you would click when you want to export your mod to give out to the world or to share with friends click that it'll ask you if you want to export without donating with donating or to cancel you select export without donating or export with donating your choice and then it'll open up a file explorer for you to be able to choose the save location and voila it'll build the mod export it and you are done and that would allow you to share your mod with the world okay and now for the last few things to be covered on m creator we have the first button which allows you to create a texture and it opens a built-in pixel art editor that allows you to make your own textures without having to have anything like gimp or photoshop or insert other name of drawing slash artistic program we will cover more in depth about this pixel art and all the different editing tools in here in a later video next you have animated texture which would allow you to uh as the name implies make an animated texture so if you want to add different frames for like animated fire or so on so forth next you have the importing buttons for importing block textures item textures ogg sounds so sound files structure files java 3d models java 3d model animations json 3d model objects uh, plus mtl 3d model so those are the quick buttons to be able to import a bunch of different highly used features that you would be most likely using for your average mod development especially if you make all your textures in an external program same thing up here in the resources tab 
This here just gives you a larger list of different things to import where you can import armor textures, GUI overlays, particles, effects, so on and so forth. It gives you all the different import options that you have access to. Over here in the tools is where you have your texture creator, armor texture creator, animation texture editor or creator then you can also simplify the process of creating certain things so to delete stuff you can highlight them all and click the trash can right here delete and yes here you can also get the minecraft data lists which just gives you a list of all the vanilla stuff that are in the game that you might want to edit last few things or more organizational for something that you might be making with this button right here, you can add a new folder. You can name your folder, so like tools, and then it allows you to put all of your tools inside of here, which will help with your organization. To go back up a folder, you can either click right here to go back to parent folder, or as I do, you can click on tutorials and then it'll show all the folders inside of it, or you can double click to return to root. This button right here allows you to rename a selected folder. So in case you named it wrong or the folder started off as a tools folder, but over time slowly transformed into a folder that holds just an entire material set so you could rename it to whatever that material set may be you have your display type which allows you to view tiles large icons medium icons small a list or details I prefer to operate under tiles just me personally is the way that I prefer it but everyone has their own preferences so edit everything to how you personally see fit so with that being said that is our entire first tutorial on mCreator going over where all the important buttons are, how every button or how all those important buttons can be functionally used, how, where to install from, how to set up your first project. And in the next one, we will be going over how to add some tools. Hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like, favorite and subscribe for more.